Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath from beingunbeatable.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about a book that saved and changed my life. It's by Robin Norwood and it's called Women Who Love Too Much When You Keep Waiting and Hoping for Them to Change. When I was in an abusive relationship, I felt trapped. My ex had almost killed me when I was seven and a half months pregnant and I'd gone back to him because I feared a future without him. I was terrified of being with him because I knew what he could do to me and I knew he was hurting me. But I was also absolutely terrified of life without him because I loved him. And when I picked up that book and I read the first line, when being in love means being in pain, you're loving too much. God, I cried. I cried. She was talking about me. And then she went on to say things like, if um, every conversation with your close friends is about him, his problems, his issues, if every sentence is he this, he that, or if you're a man, she this, she that, because this book is absolutely relevant for men as well, if you're in an abusive relationship. Then she says you're loving too much. That is, you're focusing totally on them and not on you. If you don't even like them, if there's a lot you don't like about them, even though you might love them, then you're loving too much. If you ignore uh, the way they treat you, belittle you, hurt you, maybe abuse you, even violent with, towards you, because you feel it's your role to become their therapist and rescue them and save them, because you know they need you and they're damaged inside because they've had a troubled past, you're loving too much. And the thing about not Robin Norwood is it came from experience. She's a, a psychotherapist or psychologist who dealt with many, 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 many women and she kept hearing the same thing. And it was the same pattern of women loving too much. And all of them loved these unavailable, uncaring, um, possibly addicted men to alcohol or drugs and what they would do is just keep trying to prove that they were worthy of these guys, try to show them that they could love them more and, and just no matter how little these guys cared about them or how little love they showed them, these women just kept loving even harder. And that was me, that was me. And as she says, what happens is in the absence of that love being returned to you, and in fact what you're getting is the opposite, it becomes an obsession. You start to chase it even harder. The less they give it, the more you want it. The more you have this fantasy in your head that if you can just change you or prove you love them even more, just that you're worthy enough, then you will get that fantasy person, that relationship, that dream you have in your head. You can make it happen and they will love you. It's an obsession that turns into an addiction. And as she says, that addiction is that chase for this fantasy, this need that if they love us, then we can feel good about ourselves and if they don't then we can't. And what she made me realise was that not only was I was, I was mistaking love with obsession and addiction, um, that it wasn't healthy, but she also made me realise that it came from a deeply flawed place within me. It wasn't about his problems and his issues, it was about mine that deep down I had this absolute fear of abandonment that came from not having my needs, emotional needs, entirely met as a child. Everything else was I had a wonderful childhood, family, education, brilliant sisters and parents, but my emotional needs, emotion was something we didn't do in our family. And 
So I sought out a guy who I thought was going to be the one that I could rescue and fix and turn into that savior who would finally be the one who would give me the love that I never got and I needed so desperately. And I chose a guy who I thought was damaged in some way because if by rescuing him and being the one in control of turning him into that fantasy person, then in a way I was better than him. I was superior. It's a little bit of a being a martyr, but being having that superiority when you're a martyr. You're not doing it magnanimously. You're doing it because it makes you feel good. And it made me feel that because while I was, he was needing me to fix him and rescue him, well then he wouldn't leave me. So my fear of abandonment was completely assuaged. Had I been in a relationship with a healthy man who didn't need me to fix him and control him and do all that, that was completely happy to be vulnerable and connect closely with me, I would have been too scared because what if he saw the real me and was repulsed? He would run a mile because also I had deeply insecure, low self-esteem. So this is why you sort of replicate this dysfunction and this, this um, uh, childhood patterns and you're doing it because you want to conquer it but you're doing it with a person who's never going to allow you to conquer it. The only way to conquer that is to look deeply in yourself. So it was a really liberating book for me because it made me realize that not only that was completely flawed, it wasn't love, it was addiction, it was obsession, it was unhealthy, but I wasn't trapped because all I had to do was stop going on about his problems, his, his issues, he, 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 and just focus on me. How could I heal me? What was it about me that meant I had low self-esteem? What were those unmet emotional needs that I could soothe and fill with self-love as an adult, be the adult I needed as a child to help me grow into the adult I needed to become. And so that was the start of my healing. That was the biggest part of my recovery, that I just took my focus away from him and put it onto me. And I didn't look back. I took one step at a time after that towards my healing because it starts with you. That's as simple as it is. Let go. Understand that that is not healthy. You're never, ever, ever going to find uh, someone in that person who's going to fulfill your needs and love you in an unconditional, healthy way. Let it go. Focus on healing that wounded inner child understanding the root cause of where you have that low self-esteem and then heal. And once you understand it, the fears go away. Once you confront fears, they disappear. And it's incredible how much easier that is. It was like I learned the, 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 the greatest secret of life. Let go and just look after you. And it worked, so I can highly recommend that book, Women Who Love Too Much, Why You Keep Waiting and Hoping For Him To Change, especially if you are right now in a dysfunctional or toxic relationship and you just feel you can't leave them because you still love them, feel sorry for them, feel they need you and you have to, to rescue them. And don't just stop with that book. I've also got my best self-help book guides 2018 video and blog post on beingunbeatable.com and on my YouTube channel. And that will tell you my top 10 best self-help books and personality development books. And I've also got a load more of them under categories like codependency, self-help books for men, self-help books for women, um, dysfunctional families, uh, adult, uh, emotionally immature parents. I've got a category for everybody. So make sure to check that out. And if you like this video, please do me a favor and click like, uh, subscribe and share. 
and I'll see you in the next video.